right, guys, so this is the day I've talked about a Honda Civic again, but this one is a bit special because this is the RS EHEV Civic. So it's sort of electric and sort of not, and it's pretty damn great. I kind of love it. Despite me trying to really, really find a nitpick flaws, I can't. So let's, let me explain why it's such a good car. So Civic, you have the RS with the turbo, right? And you have this, the EHEV. RS. You don't have that much of a difference visually. You can't even tell except if you look at the wheels. Okay, this is two-tone, 18-inch wheels, Michelin Pilot Sport 4s. So you also get a Toyota style. Let's see who did it first actually because Honda and Toyota have this thing where they have the blue tinge badge for their hybrid cars. This one also with the H over there, blue tinge. The exact same interior, all of the black trimming and everything, wheel of course. You have also EHEV at the back over here which I guess we'll tell you right away that it's a hybrid. The Honda Civic RS EHEV, it looks just like the RS that we all know, that we all love, that I love. The fastback design is still here. It's a good looking car, a very good looking sedan. Oh, but I found one thing wrong with it, and this is debatable, the price, 167,000 ringgit. That's pretty expensive. The same price as a BYD Auto 3. So that or this. Okay, so onto the bonnet is where the RS EHEV it's a bit special because it has the IMMD hybrid system, which you can also find in the HRV, the City, City hatchback. But this one has a two-liter engine. So yes, if you have 1.5 liter turbo, your road tax will be a bit lower, but this one has a two-liter engine and it's pretty complicated because it has the engine itself, which actually acts more as a generator. The power from that is transferred to a battery, which goes back to the front over here to power a traction motor. That traction motor is the advertised power and torque figures for the car, which is 184 PS, which is 2 PS more than the 1.5 turbo, and 315 Newton meters of torque, which is quite a lot more than 240 Newton meters of torque that you get in the 1.5 turbo. The result is a very responsive car because remember this is powered by an electric motor so any kind of throttle input or braking and anything else is all generated and supplied by a zero lag system which is the e-motor look i'm closing my eyes right now i'm touching everything around here all right to me it feels exactly like the rs 1.5 turbo open my eyes and it looks like the turbo but there is four things, exactly four things that Honda have changed between the RS Turbo and the RS EHEV. It's a lot of letters to remember, guys. So you have a very clean center stack over here with a big nine inch screen, but this one has CarPlay like the one in the 1.5 Turbo, but you also get wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. Also to match that you have a wireless charger at the bottom over here. So you have that whole wireless thing going on, right? Great. You also get one of the things that I was sort of complaining about in the previous review is that you have single zone climate control in the uh, lesser cars. Over here, you get dual zone climate control. Yes. I don't know why that's a big deal though. So you also get a fully digital instrument cluster, which is nice and matching with the whole high tech theme that this car is going on, EHEV hybrid IMMD full screen digital dash high tech. Okay, so in the back seats, right? Nobody does packaging like Honda, they are the best at it. And you get a very, very spacious back row seat, okay? You get D segment level of uh, knee room over here. All this space, a lot of places stretch out. Headroom is pretty good despite the fast back shape. Then again, I'm not a very big guy. It is a very nice place to be, just like every other Civic variant. The seats especially are very comfortable, very pliant. You sit down. There is a bit of a knee and thigh lift over here because the seats are a little bit low to the actual floor. Other than that, nothing much to complain about. You have USB ports over here. You have air conditioning vents, all you would really need. A lot of space back here. It's excellent, just like the other Civics. And one more thing about Honda, right? It's not about the Civic. RS EHEV, but more about the whole lineup because it makes me question why the Accord has any appeal because this car has D segment levels of space and boot capacity, by the way. So, this has 497 liters of space at the boot. 
which is the exact same number of liters you get in a normal Civic FE. So usually in hybrids, you have a sacrifice of boot space because you have a lithium ion battery somewhere around the boot area, which compromise rear boot space. And in this case, that doesn't happen because the lithium ion battery is actually quite small. Also, Honda packaging, all that good stuff. Yeah. So why would you buy an Accord if you have all this space in the Civic? The thing is, driving the RS EHEV is a very strange experience because you sit down and you press the start button and you know there's an engine up front but there's no sound. It is driving in EV mode. So you shift into D, everything around you, everything you touch, everything you see, it's like a normal petrol powered car, but you let your foot off the brake and it kind of coasts along like this. And the way it coasts along too, is not like over eager. It's not like an EV because the calibration here is pretty excellent. The amount of pedal, the amount of pedal modulation you can have within this car is very reassuring. Some EVs, well, actually every EV that I've tested so far, the modulation feels a little bit too eager. You know, it feels too like, I'm gonna give you all the power because, ooh, it's zero lag, right? Zero, zero lag, zero, zero delay response from the E motors. But this, even though it's operating on a pretty powerful e-motor, the way you interact with the car and the sensations that you of your inputs are all very petrol car-like. And even like, you know, like right now, there is a slight vibration from the front end over there. I know that there's an engine humming away, that two-liter Atkinson cycle engine. And the way it works is that it is supposed to be efficient right it's two liter normally aspirated it's supposed to be just kind of like in its sweet spot rpm wise just spinning along and using the least amount of fuel to generate the most amount of electricity for the batteries and then to the motors which then drives the front wheels so it's complicated the power goes from here to the back then front again then distributes the power all this is just complicated what you need to know is that the way it drives completely natural you have no sensation so far that is a hybrid, but it drives very quiet. You get that extra refinement, extra quietness because it's an EV. I suspect as well that they've put in some extra sound insulation material in this car because it just feels more refined. More refined than I was experiencing in the RS Turbo. All right, eco mode, boring. I want to drive this in sport. I can feel right away that the throttle has been sharpened up the smaller inputs are getting recognized. <laughs> and it feels fast because in sport mode, that small input gets translated into a very big jump in acceleration. The way it delivers it is impressive because there is no CVT lag, no turbo lag, no nothing. It's just, you. it's very linear. You, the, the amount of travel in like millimeters of your foot, of your right foot, you just creep up more on traffic and then you let go of the gas. It just kind of coasts along, it's fine. The, the pedal shifters here have no real use besides, you know, what they call it, regen braking. Yeah, it's like every other Honda that does regen braking. You pull on the downshift pedal and you do more regen braking and to undo that, you do the upshift pedal. So you have a pretty light car Okay, with a lot more torque. You get 184 PS and 315 Newton meters of torque. But that torque, again, it's an electric motor. So you have no lag whatsoever. Everything is just point and squirt performance. And the modulation is great, guys. It is really, really intuitive. There's no over eagerness. There's no kind of like un unassuredness. You're always very, very certain about how much performance or how much yeah, acceleration you're getting from every little input of the pedal. It's just nice to just drive around. It's easy to thread, agile. And the thing is with that battery out back and the electric motor is way down below, you also get a slightly better, as in lower, center of gravity. We took a meter drive of this car back in early March and it was raining 
and miserable and therefore we couldn't publish the video that we wanted to publish about this car, the Nia Drive. Uh, which is a shame because we're on the highway a lot and you know, apparently this car has a top speed of 180 kph and I can't remember for certain but I think I was going at, so at one point a little bit quicker than that. Uh, yeah, so it is really, really fast for a, you know, a normal Civic. And the way this thing delivers performance. Yep, you point and squirt. You hear that? That is a fake sound. Okay. So the two liter normally aspirated Atkinson cycle four cylinder up front there doesn't really make much of a noise and if, I, and if it does and if you hear it I don't think it's a very good noise so to kind of like give you a more sporty feel uh, Honda saw fit to kind of like pipe in synthetic noise so all that you just heard was just piped into the speakers but you know what it's effective because there is there is a kick down effect to it and the noise increases and then, you know, you there's a, there's a kind of like simulated gear shift where the noise also dim diminishes when you upshift to a gear. See? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh... That's all fake. But it's effective and it feels sporty. It feels more, it feels smoother and just more, uh, what do you call that? Sonorous, it, it, it has a better sound than you would have in the Civic Turbo, than you would have in any, well, any Civic of this generation, okay? And the delivery right there, look, I, I was reaching law-breaking speeds just like that. There was no real hesitation. It just went. That's really, really, ugh. It's just an all-rounder, guys. If I had any reservations about this being, but the Civic, being a very very good almost perfect all-rounder in the turbo then this is this is just next level this is almost very very nearly at a 99th percentile 0.9 percentile of being a very perfect all-rounder because you have performance you have ample performance and the way you deliver it is so seamless and smooth and fine and all this stuff that I can't really nitpick and then you have the efficiency and I haven't even gotten to that yet because the this car is crazy efficient I mentioned just now that we had that media drive right it was from KL to Desaru in Joho so that was a trip of like I don't know 400 500 kilometers and this thing did it in like half a tank and it wasn't like we were hypermiling okay it wasn't like we were trying to conserve fuel we were in sport mode or I was in sport mode the entire time. I was trying to get there as early as I could for check-in to our hotel. I was being very abusive with this car, trying to just get it to eat more petrol. It wouldn't do it, half a tank. So in theory, you could fill up this normal size sedan tank up to full and you could do Johor to Thailand if you wanted to with all this performance. And you know what, you could probably do all that with, you know, you know, just trying to not hypermod, just trying to be as fuel inefficient as possible. How impressive is that? And if you live in the city, this hybrid is perfect because it barely uses any fuel. You have the refinement and the quietness and the serene zen-like serenity of an EV without having to have to be worrying about that range anxiety without having to worry about oh no am i gonna plug in next just fill in with gas guys easy as that ah just go to the pumps as usual and the way you're driving like most of us going to work and back and doing errands and you know sending people here and picking up people there or whatever it is you'll probably only fill up once a month i think with my usage i think once every two months i can probably drive so little that i would have to fill up this car 
once every two months. And I get so much performance and I get so much uh, comfort and features and fun. This car can actually make me smile. It's a fun car to drive. All the things that I've probably said before about the Civic Turbo RS, I can still say about the EH EV because it is that much fun. Ah, guys, I am trying to nitpick. Okay, I found one actually, a nitpick. The camera for the rear view, the reversing camera is pretty low res. It would have been nice to get also a 360 degree, you know, view, all around view camera system. That'd be great. <sighs> all I can say is um, maybe don't get it in white because white is boring. Get this in the red, get this in the black and enjoy yourself because this car can do everything. You can have fun. You can, you can, <laughs> you can fill up once every two months if you wanted to. You can, you can sit in a traffic jam and not have to do any work. You can save fuel like no one's business. You can carry all the luggage that you want, huge boot. You can carry all the passengers that you might conceivably want because it's got a lot of headroom, a lot of legroom at the back, despite it having like one of those fastback designs. So guys, remember last time when I first drove the Civic RS the first time and I said it was annoyingly impressive? Well, this is unbelievably impressive. It just takes out the box. It's spacious, it's comfortable, it's sporty, it looks good. It's expensive, but it's also in this form, very, very, very efficient and also very, very, very fun to drive and fast. So how, what can I say about this car besides it's really, really good? I can complain about the price. That's it. I can complain about the fact that maybe I would want a more prestigious badge for that kind of money. That's it. But everything else, this thing ticks all the boxes and there is no downside besides the price. So I'm kind of like, my whole job here is to critique a car, is to nitpick certain things and to kind of like make a fuss about all the things that is wrong with it. But in this case, it's hard to do because it is such a good car. It makes me wonder why you would buy an Accord. Hopefully a new Accord is coming soon and that'll kind of move the game up. But right now, this offers D-segment space, performance, looks and style and prestige and comfort and sportiness. It's, it's really good, guys.